Good evening, everyone. It is six o'clock on the Eastern Time Zone clock, and today is Dogist First. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So today is the first Thursday of the month at 6 p.m. You know you should be at TV Toastmasters. You may take it away as our Toastmaster for Dogist First. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam uh, Club President. Uh, yes, uh, my name is David Ash, and I will be Toastmaster for today. And today we have uh, we have two uh, two speeches uh, on our plate. Uh, Lila, do I, am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yes. Okay. Uh, so we have uh, Lila, who is, uh, I believe, a winner of a district competition. Do I have that correct with uh, the speech you're going to give today? You're a winner of a district competition. So we have Lila as a guest speaker who is going to be... And then uh, Betsy, who is still a fairly new member of our club, is going to be giving a speech. And I believe, Betsy, if I'm correct, this is the first uh, speech you're uh, giving at this club. So this is essentially your icebreaker speech for this club. Is that correct? And I, I, I see you're nodding it, so that's, that's good. Okay, so the format today is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be uh, mixing things up in a couple of different ways. One is that we're going to be having... Uh, officer installations for anyone who is an officer uh, in this club who uh, has just started their new term on July 1st. So we're going to be starting that in, in just a moment. We're also going to be doing, we're going to be doing regular evaluations for, for Betsy's speech. And we're going to be doing round robin evaluations for Leela's speech, just because, just to kind of mix things up a little bit. I know we've done round robin evaluations a couple of times before. And since Lila is a guest here and may not be around as much, it gives a chance for a little bit of feedback from everyone. So when we do the round robin evaluations, I'm going to ask any, any member or, or, or guest who, who is interested can talk for just 30 to 60 seconds on, on an evaluation for, uh, for, for, for our Lila speech when we get to that point. So uh, without further ado, though, I do want, to, uh, do want to get to the officer installations. I'm not sure if we quite have everyone here yet, so we may need to uh, may need to just be whoever is happens to be here right now. I know there's a couple of officers I did invite, but are not are not here yet. But for now, I'm going to I'm going to invite our our guest uh, Renee Mitchell, and you are uh, you are the club growth. Uh, what can you give me your title again, Renee? Sure, it's um, District Forty Club Growth Director. Okay, very good. Here, Renee, uh, so you're the club growth director for District 40. And Renee has been very nice and kind to come to our club today to basically preside over the installation of the officers. So without further ado, I'm going to let uh, Renee take it from here. All righty. Well, thank you so much. And good evening, fellow Toastmaster. It is my honor to be a part of this club um, officer installation ceremony. I'll go ahead and start. If there's any outgoing officer, I think everybody's on camera except Veronica, but for all the outgoing club officers, you are now discharged from all further duties and responsibilities as officers of the TV Toastmasters Club. I am now here to install the officers of the TV Toastmasters Club and prepare them for the challenges that lie ahead. Their collective challenge is to make this club strong, dedicated to helping people from all walks of life speak in an effective manner, listen with sensitivity, and think with creativity. I'm going to ask each officer to remain on camera as I briefly describe the challenges that they must meet and the responsibilities that they must fulfill. I'm going to go ahead and start with your new treasurer, which is Janet Kesslin. You are the club's accountant. You manage the finances of the club, coordinating the collection of funds if needed for any club projects. You're also responsible for supporting club members in the payment of membership dues as required. Janet. Will you perform these duties to the best of your ability? Okay. Your new secretary is Veronica Sanford. You maintain all club records, manage club files, handle club correspondence, and take the minutes at each meeting or executive committee meeting. You're also in charge of updating and distributing a roster of the current paid membership and keeping the club officer list current for Toastmasters International. Veronica, will you perform these duties to the best of your ability? Yes, ma'am. All righty. 
Next, we will move on to your new Vice President of Public Relations, who is Betsy Irvin. You promote the club at the local community meet level and notify the media about the club's existence and the benefits it provides. You promote the club, update the club web's content, safeguarding the, brand, the Toastmasters brand identity. It is your job to notify the media whenever your club does something newsworthy and to make sure that you're getting the word out about the amazing things that the TV Toastmasters Club is doing. Betsy, will you perform these duties to the best of your ability? Yes, I will. All righty. Next is your new Vice President of Education, who is David Ash. As Vice President of Education, you schedule member speeches, verify the completion of projects, and serve as a resource for questions about the education program, speech contests, and your club mentor program. You are an important source of Toastmasters knowledge for club members, and it is your job to become, to become familiar with all aspects of the Toastmasters education program. David, will you perform these duties to the best of your ability? Yes, I will. Last but certainly not least is your new president of the TV Toastmasters Club, which is Joy Harris. Toastmaster Harris, having been elected the president of the TV Toastmasters Club, you are its chief executive officer and are expected to preside at all club meetings and at all regular and special meetings of your executive committee. It is your challenge to see that the club enables its members to achieve their education goals. It is also your challenge to see that your club helps the area, division, district, and Toastmasters International to meet their part of your team as well as a leader. A team is more than a collection of people. It's an emotional force rooted in the feelings, thoughts, and actions of all the members with a common goal of achievement, sharing, and mutual support. Work with your team members to create a healthy, dynamic club and a club for which everyone is proud of. Will you as president accept this challenge and perform your duties to the best of your ability? Yes, I will. It is now my pleasure to declare that these Toastmasters have been installed into the offices upon which they are elected. Will everyone just please remain on camera for this last part? Knowing that the growth and development of the Toastmasters program in the TV Toastmasters Club depends largely upon the actions of this group, on your honor, as members of this Toastmasters group and Toastmasters International, do you all pledge to individually and collectively stand by this club, live with it, and work with it throughout the coming year? Yes. All right. Yes. Yes. Hopefully everybody agrees with that. All right. Well, thank you so much for letting me take this few minutes to officially install your officers. And I'm going to hand the meeting back over to your Toastmaster of the day, David Ash. David, back to you. Thank you, Renee. Thank you for that awesome installation. And it's definitely inspiring to, to be taking on myself a new, a new role. I've not been VP of education before, so I'm going to be learning the role as, as I go. And it's an exciting role for sure as I'm sure of the people taking them on. Uh, so with that, uh, let's, uh, let's move on now to, uh, to other roles in this, in this meeting. And our timer of the day I'm going to introduce is going to be Veronica Sanford. And uh, Veronica, I'm, I'm going to ask if it's, if it's okay, when we get to the, the round robin evaluations, I'm gonna moderate the round robin evaluations. I'm gonna ask you to keep that part of it as timer to just 30 to 60 seconds to give as many people as possible a chance to have to speak in the round robin evaluation part of it. Uh, so, so with that, Veronica, can you tell us a bit more about the uh, timer roll? Oops, I think you're on mute, Veronica. Each one of us is an experienced Toastmaster, so I will say at the point at which you have hit your first mark, it, it'll be green. The second mark will be yellow. The third mark will be red. And I do need to ask Layla if your speech is 10 minutes and would you like your warning at eight, seven and 10? Sorry, excuse me, eight, nine and 10? It's five to seven minutes. So this speech. Ah, thank you very much. And then David, for the round robin, how would you like the timer, the, the people who are giving evaluations to be, to be, indicated. Do you want 15 seconds or 20 seconds, 25 seconds, 30 seconds? 
Um, well, no, because we it's, it's thirty to sixty seconds, so may, maybe maybe thirty, forty-five, and sixty. Would, would that yeah, work? For you? We'll do. Yeah. That's perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Timer, and we'll now move on to the grammarian and the word of the day. And one of the roles of the, of the grammarian, uh, aka the odd uh, counter, is to give us a word of the day, which I think may already be in the chat. But I'm going to let Janet. Uh, Tell us a little bit more about the word of the day and about her role. Yes, I just put the word of the day in the chat. It is an adjective indicative serving as a sign or indication of something. An example of using indicative is having recurrent dreams is not necessarily indicative of a psychological problem. And um, I will also be cleaning the filler words and looking for interest, interesting or unique words. Great. Uh, th thank you, uh, Janet. Yes, I, I always find the officer installation to be indicative of what I hope will be a, a good year and a, learning, a year for learning more about being in Toastmasters and the opportunities in Toastmasters. So I hope well, that's kind of an indicative sign of what's to come in the year ahead. So thank you again for, for that introduction, introduction Janet. Uh, the next part of our meeting is always the most challenging part of the meeting. I think we all are experienced Toastmasters here. Uh, some of us are guests, but have, been, have a lot of experience in other clubs. So I don't need to say that much about what Table Topics is, but uh, Table Topics is an opportunity for everyone in the club or every, any guest who happens to be here to talk for maybe one or two minutes on an impromptu topic. So although it's a very brief speech that we're asked to give in table topics, it's sometimes a bit more challenging because we don't come prepared. We have to talk on whatever the table topics person asks us to talk about. So with that, I will turn it over to our table topics master who also happens to be our club president, Joy Harris, and she'll tell us a bit more about table topics in general and what she wants to do with it today. Thank you, Joy. Thank you, David. We will speak for one to two minutes on an impromptu topic. And I think we have time today for everyone to get an opportunity to speak. So I'll just call on you at random. And if you're wondering what today is, it is dogist. And many dog parents call the eight month of the year dogist because it's National Dog Month, and it includes today, which is the universal birthday for shelter dogs. And this special day was made to honor the pups in her lives who were adopted or rescued or living in shelters. An adopted dog's birth state can be a bit murky because we may not know when this dog was born, and these events were created to ensure that dogs get a birthday, even if it's not their real one. So today's questions are going to revolve around pet ownership. So I'll ask specifically about dogs. And if you do not have any knowledge or interest about dogs and shelter dogs, you may reply with any type of humor. You may avoid the question altogether and answer something in politician style. You may reverse the question. <clears throat> you may just give a direct answer or you may redirect the question in any way that you choose. So Betsy, could I ask you a question? Do you know any examples of people adopting a dog, people getting a shelter dog maybe? Uh, yeah, I know a lot of examples because I work with rescue dogs and work for an, an organization called Open Arms Transports, and it's a volunteer position. And I take these dogs for one night, and then I take them, they, then they get transported to somewhere to where their uh, foster parents will be. And uh, I've had a, some foster dogs for a few few weeks before, and I sometimes I monitor the runs. And I recently had a 
luncheon, Janet was there and a uh, dog rescue luncheon and we raised quite a bit of money so, to help the dog rescue organization. So I have one dog that is sort of a rescue dog and uh, my own of my own and he was we found him through a Boston Terrier rescue organization. His my son and daughter-in-law were volunteering for that organization. And somebody adopted this little dog and and they were, I think, fairly well off. And they named him Corrupt. I'm not sure why. But they got a new job and they decided they couldn't take the dog with them. So my son and my daughter-in-law rescued the dog. I mean, not rescued, but they over, they fostered him. And then somebody in Michigan adopted him. And then the people in Michigan just said, we can't take this dog because he barks too much. So my husband and I said, well, that's too much bouncing around. We're, we'll adopt him. So that's the end of my story. And we changed his name, of course, to Little Pete. <laughs> nice. Thank you for sharing. So I'm going to go to Janet next. Janet, I don't know if you have any pets, but today's question for you is indicative of the spirit of people naming a universal dog birthday. So do you think it is important to honor a birthday for shelter dogs? Thank you for that question, Table Topic Master Joy. Uh, and the only dog I had was when I was young and it was my sister's piano teacher had a dog who had a puppy so I that was my experience with dogs when I was a child and if a dog doesn't have a birthday that that that's known of I think it is very nice to have um, a set day and uh, apparently August 1st is the day for a dog's birthday so happy birthday to all the dogs out there that are celebrating their birthday today um, i do know a person a, a high school alumni who rescues dogs all the time and finds home for them and i'm sure she has i'm sure she's celebrating their birthdays right now thank you Nice, thank you. Well, I thought there would be more time, but we only have a uh, time for one more. I want to give Veronica Sanford an opportunity to talk about rescue dogs. Veronica, I understand people show up at shelters just to get a dog and take it out for a walk and then put it back in the crate. And it might be the only time or one or two times of that whole day that they got out of their crate. Do you think it is important for people to just stop by and volunteer at a shelter? Hi, Madam Table Topics Master. Thank you very much. I do think it's indicative of our system that there are too many animals out there for people. Only because life changes and so many people got dogs during the pandemic and then when work at home uh, was ended and returned to work. <laughs> started people had to give up their animals um, and the animals of course suffered I rescued dogs I rescued dogs for 18 months I had one dog after another for a total of eight dogs they were all adopted and I then I had a little bit of a break and I found my own dog who I I got I grabbed <laughs> who had been a a, a stud a male breeder dog who had been kenneled for six years. And and so his personality is very introverted and he's scared by a lot of things and had to learn houses and cars and leashes and people, other dogs he was fine with. But that said, I will say that I've had a lot of, ex not a lot, a lot of experience with the shelter, but our current local Cincinnati um, dog pound is Cincinnati Animal Cares. Uh, the foster program is such that they give you the food 
dog food. They give you the leash. They give you the crate. They give you the medicine. They give you everything you would need for to take care of that animal, cat, dog, bird, whatever. And and all you have to do is give it love. And and there you go. And the nice thing is, is then the dog settled down or the animals settled down and they don't have that anxiety. The first three days are really, really tough on the animal um, because they're still so jagged from being in the shelter. It's so noisy there for them. But that said, then they become more dog-like and people will fall in love with them and adopt them. That's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Veronica. I think the responses here are indicative of the love that we have for pets and for honoring uh, rescues, adoption for dogs, and working with the shelter dogs. So I would like to turn it back over to David Ash, who is our Toastmaster for the day, who will get us started with our prepared speeches. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Club President. And yes, I, I did get a chance to really have time to get to everyone, but that definitely, the fact that I do not have a, a dog at present is indicative of the fact that it does require a pretty long term of commitment. It's, it's, it's a great thing to do for a short amount of time, but if you can't make that 12 to 15 or more year commitment, it's, you know, it, it is maybe indicative of something you that one should not do. So with that, let's move on to our, uh, our, our speeches. And the first speech of the day is our keynote speaker, Alila Kabesh, who is uh, coming to us from a win in a district contest. Uh, her speech is entitled Two-Way Street. Alila Kabesh, a member of the Talk Club in Cincinnati, Ohio, has been a member of Toastmasters for four years. She loved to pay for booklets, but when Pathways came, she quit. Two years later, she returned with the determination to confront those Pathways, which may as well be called Mazeways, head on, often to speak in every state virtually. This decision was twofold, for the challenge and to avoid boring her club with her talks. She made it to 37 states, mostly because the other states don't do virtual. Oh well. Her talk entitled Two-Way Street is from Strategic Relationship Using Descript Descriptive Language. Lila Kabesh, Two-Way Street. Two-Way Street, Lila Kabesh. Ever wish to belong? To fit in? One day, my principal, where I was teaching ESL, English as a Second Language, called me to his office. I panicked. We would like you to also teach Spanish. It is your language. Do I tell my boss he is wrong? I went back to college and became certified to teach Spanish. Fellow friends, guests, people pleasers. I grew up in the top north of Africa. We speak a dialect and French. When I came to the US, no matter where I went, people came by asking me about Mexico or to practice their Spanish. I don't know it. Usually they reply, you are very funny. Really, I don't. You should be a comedian. Do I disappoint people? And that's how my journey learning Spanish began. Ever since, I wanted to go to Mexico and learn about my people. Two years ago, I was invited to be a speaker at a conference in Mexico. From the moment I landed, I was blown away by the kindness and help extended to me by my host, the leadership team. Senior Rafael showed me around the convention center. He is a former soccer player for the national team, and now he teaches ESL. Like I was cocooned in this attentiveness to a degree that bordered on amusing. My hotel was a stone's throw away from the convention center. Each time I tried to return, an entourage was ready to escort me. What am I? A Grammy winning artist? A kid on the first day of school? Or the obvious tourist? This is a comical contradiction. In the US, People thought I was Mexican. And here in Mexico, it seemed as if I wore a neon sign that said, needs assistance. 
Imagine my surprise when I was offered help to cross the street. Senor Rafael, it's there. Then I realized, of course he knows. They booked it. I'm going to be fine. I look like you. Not you, you're a guy. All of you. He looked at me. No. This is not the time not to be Mexican. Oh, there's more. Yo hablo espanol, which means I can go anywhere and be fine. We have streets, mochos even. I've seen them before. His answer? Be careful when you cross. It's a two-way street. I can see that. And he walked me all the way to the entrance. The next day, I was invited to an informal dinner by the leadership team. After a long day filled with excitement, I was glad to finally swap my heels for comfy sneakers and my dress for a jogging outfit. Senior Rafael, tasked with my safety, came for my escorted walk to help. Proud of his athletic ability, he pointed where we're going. I saw the place. I also saw a chance for some fun. I play this game with my eighth graders, a race. I beat them, ending with, hurry up, grandpa. They giggle. When a race, I had confidence from countless victories against my students. His eyes lit up, challenge accepted. Off we went, dodging pedestrians, Trees, splashing fountains, weaving between parked cars. The finish line was in plain view. And what could only be described as a miracle, considering my undisclosed age, I beat him. Both of us, exhilarated, out of breath. Hey, apurete, abuelito. Hey, hurry up, grandpa. He laughed even harder. The race wasn't about proving I can handle the street. I felt the Mexican protective nature, a warm wrap around you blanket kind of love. The issue, I struggle to accept help gracefully. Do I fit in? Do I belong to accept? After dinner, the entire team walked with me to my hotel. We talked about our families, students, hopes, dreams, paused for pictures frequently. I had the best time. I learned that kindness is a two-way street. Going together, connecting and helping each other. Is it the journey or the destination? I believe it's a company along the way, helping and connecting, open up, accept it, and give back. You belong already. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you for that inspiring speech. And now I'd like to... Uh even though it's going to be a round robin evaluation, if we can put one minute um, on the clock just so everyone can jot down any notes they might have. Time.
Okay, thank you. And our next scheduled speaker of the day he is going to be introduced by, I believe, by Veronica Sanford. So I will ask uh, Veronica if you can introduce our next speaker, Betsy. It's my great pleasure to introduce Betsy. And I will say that I have known Betsy since it seems like forever. <laughs> that said, Betsy has been a Toastmaster, been with Toastmasters since 2016 and joined TV Toastmasters this year. In addition to TV Toastmasters, Betsy is the Vice President of Education for Right Way Toastmasters. That's right with a W, like Wright Patterson Air Force Base, and BPPR for Springboro Toastmasters, both in Division A. Betsy started her term as Division A Director on July 11th, and Betsy, <laughs> and Betsy, is the VP of PR for TV Toastmasters. So I would like to welcome Betsy, who is going to be giving her key, uh, excuse me, her icebreaker speech, leadership development icebreaker speech. Please welcome Betsy Irvine. In 2016, I was working for General Electric, as I mentioned before, in one of the table topics, and I lost my job. It was kind of like a forced early retirement. And, but it was a friendly retire, uh, forced a retirement because they gave me, among other things, they gave me someone, a, a counselor, to help me find a job. And my counselor's name was Judith. And I was sitting in Judith's office and she was trying to show me these different ways of picking your top 20 teams and so on. And she said, I can't get you to talk. How can I get you to talk? Well, I had heard of Toastmasters. I went to a couple meetings at GE and I'm having a thunderstorm right now. I don't know if you can hear it. I mentioned Toastmasters to her and she got right on her computer and searched and found a club right in my hometown, which is Springboro. And I have to say that it has done me a lot of good. I can talk a little better now. And at work, I did get a job. I'm working at Wright Patterson Air Force Base and I'm just a contractor but I'm given lots of position of authority. I lead a team of a few hundred people. It's a, a, a team to work on reliability. I give talks to people, a, a hundred or so people, and it's really done good for my career. And also I've been kind of moving up the ranks, I guess you could say ranks in uh, Toastmasters itself, the leadership. I started out as a secretary and went to VPPR, and then I tried the speech contest and, and became an area director and did that a couple of times. And now I'm, I'm a division director. Besides doing the division director, I'm Working on my DTM, as some of you know, I'm work. I've done the um, basic steps. I did the project I talked about earlier today, the open arms transport luncheon, and be doing coaching pretty soon, and also a speech craft, which I'm hoping to help Division D, maybe the Oxford area. So those are some of the activities that I'm doing. And I think Toastmasters has helped me do those things. It's helped me to be more open, more able to speak off the cuff, and also to speak without shaking and getting nervous. And I, I enjoy being able to give a talk. I have no idea where I'm at on time, but I think it's indicative that Toastmasters does a lot of good if you give it a chance. So I encourage anyone that might be watching the video to give it a chance. And that's all I have today.
Thank you, Betsy. And uh, since Veronica is the timer and your evaluator, I will put a minute on the clock here and let Veronica jot down a few notes. I'm good, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so now at this point, it's uh, we're, we're done with the uh, with the speeches, so that's indicative that it's time to move on to evaluations. Um, I'm going to be changing the order of things very, very slightly. Ordinarily, I would introduce the general evaluator at this point, but since I'm going to be moderating the round robin evaluation, I'll handle that part, and then when we're done with the round robin evaluations for Leela then we can move on and I'll introduce the general evaluator. So at this point, uh, is anyone who wants to uh, maybe say a few words about Lila's speech uh, is welcome to do so. So feel free to, to raise your hand and to make it a, a two-way street, even Lila yourself, if you want to say a few things about your speech and how you thought it went, you'd be welcome to do so. So raise your hand and if no one speaks quickly, I may start calling on people. I'll go first. Uh, okay, John. Layla, it is easy to see why you are a contest winner in the ability to deliver a message. What I learned through your presentation was an excellent use of gestures. And I've still been cautioned, not so many facts and figures, learn to tell a story. Your whole speech was a story and yet you were making a point. So your point totally got across through your story. I also liked, maybe it wasn't always supposed to be funny, but I liked the way you you looked at it lightly when people judged you in a way that you didn't even understand. You weren't Mexican, but I felt there was so much sincerity in your presentation and I really enjoyed it very much. So thank you so much for coming to our club and speaking. Next. Thank you, Joy. I can go next. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you, Renee. Yep. Yeah, no problem. Layla, I love listening to your speech. The things that I thought you did super well, especially being on a Zoom, was use of the space. You didn't just stand or sit right in front of the camera, you moved around and that was good. And even front and back, I thought that that was great. I also liked the pace that you weren't rushed or anything. But the thing that I really loved is you had a lot of humor sprinkled in to your speech was, was amazing. But I loved at the end, how you kind of lowered your voice and got serious. And you talked about how uh, kindness is a two-way street. So even throughout that whole speech, we were laughing with you and, you know, relating to you. And then you really closed it. So bring us back to what was the whole point of the speech. And that was the lasting impression that was left with me. So I, I loved it. I thought you did an amazing job. So thank you so much for sharing that tonight. Thank you, Renee. Uh, Veronica. Thank you. Layla, thank you so much. I love having guests come and speak to us. They provide a, a whole new way of looking at the world. And I will say that I got a chance to see from your eyes what it feels like to be from another country and to come to the United States and to have people make assumptions about you. And you did it with such grace and with such kindness. I will say that your trip to Mexico was not as overwhelming as mine. <laughs> I'm glad that you were sheltered. It really makes me feel that how much the people who were there cared for you. To make your speech even better, if it is on Zoom, 
I will say that my um, I'm very sensitive to sound, so I tend to lower the volume just a little bit. When you turned your head, it was harder for me to hear you. And so that is something that you might want to be aware of. Maybe I'm the only one who felt that way. But overall, other people have mentioned your gestures, the humor, everything uh, indicates as to why you are the worldwide winner or <laughs> the winner. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Veronica. Do we have any other, uh, anyone else who has any thoughts on Layla's speech? I, I can say something. Oh, yeah. Okay, Janet, go ahead. See, uh, Layla, I enjoyed the word cocoon that you said and the race. I was wondering if it was across a busy street. So, so that was kind of a question in my mind if it was across a busy street and I I didn't quite catch the name of the building you were running to. But as everyone has said, your gestures and body motions and use of the Zoom screen um, was wonderful. And um, it was nice that you had um, your message about kindness being a two-way street. So thank you so much. Thank you, Jenna. Hi, Betsy. Hi. I like the vocal variety throughout the speech, especially at the end. And I liked your story about people asking you to teach them me me uh, Spanish in, in your reaction. I thought that was pretty good. So I, I really enjoyed your speech. And I, that's about all I have to add. But that's just want to say those few things. Thank you. Mm. Is there anyone else? Don't see any hands. So I'll just, I'll just say my own, uh, put in my own uh, two cents for us. Uh, so thank you again, Leila, for coming to our club. And it is, is always inspiring to have guest speakers come to the club. And I thought, what I thought you did really, really well was this whole concept of a two-way street. You built, you built up gradually to explaining what that concept was, which I thought was really amazing. So it's, it's kind of like, a two-way street kindness is this two-way street. One needs to both offer kindness and accept, and it's essentially a connection that, that's very much two-way. But you built up to that very gradually and in a, in a gentle way that I thought that I thought was very effective. So you, you started out, brought us in with an interesting, some interesting stories about your background, how you ended up going to Mexico and unexpectedly, and how eventually you found out kindness is a two-way street. But you you built up to that idea very, very well. So I thought it was a very well structured. This was an amazing concept, and I definitely understand why this was a uh, district winning speech. Thank you. And I think with that, uh, well, I, I guess maybe like, if you have any if any thoughts on your own speech or anything you want to want to add yourself, uh, and then we can move on to the evaluation of uh, Betsy's speech. Uh, no, thank you so much for the invitation. I'm very grateful. I did not look at it, so I mostly forgot about it. And I was running to the hotel. I just uh, checked in Denver for the one conference I'm attending. So I'm very grateful and panicking. And Jeff, what is that link again that you <laughs> sent to me? Was it six? Was it seven? So thank you so much for all of your kindness. Thank you. And have a good uh, uh, rest of your trip in, in Denver. Okay, with that... I would like to uh, introduce our general evaluator of the day, who is also our club coach, uh, Jeff Bott. And Jeff will be leading the evaluation phase of our meeting. The rest of the evaluation. Thank you, David. It's time for general evaluation, and that's indicative of giving valuable feedback to all of our presenters. So let's start with the icebreaker evaluation of Betsy. Veronica, I'll turn it over to you. Yes. 
Thank you. And of course, I set my phone down. So if somebody could keep an eye on it for me, I would be ever so greatly oh, grateful, or I will stall while I pull up my timer, which I just did. Okay, super. <laughs> Talk myself 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Betsy, I just, I just love you. I just think you're wonderful. Uh, I, I find that people who are more hesitant in speaking are very endearing because they don't come out fists up, hammering away at their points. They tend to listen more. And I find that to be quite, quite true with you as well. And also because you're such a fine human being and volunteer for so many good projects, uh, Toastmasters, TV Toastmasters included. That said, <laughs> I love icebreakers because we get to know the people. And this, in this particular case, it was absolutely no different than any other icebreaker. We got to know more about you, how you came to Toastmasters, all the things that you're doing. It made me completely exhausted just listening to you. And I understand what an absolutely busy person you are. And I'm so glad you're in our club. And I will also say that to make your speech even better, when you were looking, it appeared to me that you were looking at your notes on your left side, although I can't tell really how, you know, it goes with cameras and TV and, I mean, uh, uh, video, et cetera. But to me, it was your, your notes were on your left side. So every once in a while, you'd look to your left and you would it, it appear to be reading through your notes. And so what I recommend people do, if they're, if they're able to do it, is let's say my camera is right here, right there. You can kind of see where my, so what I'll do is I will put five points, my intro main point, my three main points, and then my conclusion main point on an index card and any words that I need to remember. And I'll actually tape it right there. So actually when I'm looking at my notes, I'm looking at the camera. And it looks like I'm making great eye contact. And that way, even, and then hopefully I will have the pictures of the people who are in the audience to the side. So every once in a while I can glance to the side to see, are they yawning? Are they bored? <laughs> but other than that, I would just say that it did not detract from your speech. I thought your speech was quite enjoyable and fun. And back to you, Mr. General Evaluator. Fantastic. Thank you. Let's turn it over to our word of the day grammarian I'll counter, Janet Kesslin. Thank you, Jeff. I'll first start out with how many times people use the word of the day. And David got the prize of using the most, the word of the day the most times. He said indicative at least five times. And Indicative was also used a couple times by Joy, Raga, Betsy, and Jeff. I I want to challenge uh, Layla, even though she's doing a district to try to work for the word of the day in your speech, just for variety for something different for your speech. And let's see. As far as Oz, Oz, there were several Oz by David and a couple by Betsy. And I didn't catch any grammatical errors when we made. So it was a, a pretty good night. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. And now let's, uh, I think we got a timer in here someplace. Yes, timer, Veronica. Hi, I'm going to speed read. <laughs> so for table topics, we had Betsy at one minute, 55 seconds, Janet at one minute, 13 seconds, me at two minutes and one second, the cobbler's kids never have shoes. And I will go on to Layla. I so apologize, Layla. I forgot to start timing you. So I had to estimate. 
<laughs> I think it was three minutes. I was so enraptured before I started the clock. The best I can guess is that you were about exactly seven minutes. So that's the best that I can say. And my total apologies. Uh, but just liken it to the the how enraptured I was with your speech. Okay, so. Betsy, your speech was three, min three minutes and 31 seconds, shy of four to six, but still good. And then, okay, um, the speed evaluations, round robins. Joy was 54 seconds. I was one minute, again, 17 seconds. Cobbler kid don't have shoes. Renee, 54 seconds. Janet, 50 seconds. David, one minute and two seconds. Betsy, 23 seconds. And my evaluation was two minutes and 45 seconds. Thank you. And back to you, Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you, Veronica. Uh, just from the general comments from the General Evaluator. First of all, Renee, our new D40 Club Growth Director, thanks for coming and doing this induction for us tonight. Very much appreciated. I also wanted to call out David Ash, not only for being the Toastmaster to the day, but as the VP of Ed, he is responsible for ensuring that the agenda is filled out and we had a full agenda. Also, I know he's he reached out to the presenters and he's done that the last couple of weeks or the last couple of meetings. So that's really helpful. And I wanted to call that out. Joy, your, your table topic, uh, topic uh, theme was doggest. Uh, I have to share my screen. There's my dog. <laughs> The latest dog. We have another dog as well, but both of them are greyhounds. So I had to share my uh, shamelessly shamelessly share my picture of my dog. Uh, Betsy was the first up to bat. This was a softball thrown to Hank Aaron. Uh, Betsy even has a dog cage in the background, and she was asked the question about dog adoption. So I don't think it gets any easier than that, Betsy. And you hit a grand slam uh, talking about adopting dogs. Veronica, kind of the same thing, right? Uh, as a somebody that volunteers, <laughs> so these were these were softball questions. Uh, both of them hit out of the park. Janet, uh, the birthdays for dogs also. Uh, kudos for you on answering that one. On the evaluations, I won't say any more about Layla's evaluation, but I did want to congratulate Layla for winning the district. I don't. It was a district ten. It's a it's a district in Colorado, I think. Is that correct? You're on mute, but that's fine. Uh, and thanks for showing up today, Layla, uh, as our guest speaker. Really appreciate that. Joy, Renee, Veronica, Janet, Betsy, and David all chimed in. One thing I just want to point out, two-way street. I think of Toastmasters as being a two-way street. That's why it's a club. It, it has a club format. It's not a lecture format. People don't go and just sit and listen to somebody talk. Both people have to give and they have to get. Um, so it is a two-way street. Betsy, your icebreaker, a second all of Veronica's comments, really enjoyed that. I thought it was interesting, your second career at Wright Pat and the advancement that you, the, the pro progression that you had there paralleled with your Toastmaster advancement. Um, the other thing that struck me was the fact this GE layoff, I thought you said it was 2019. So it was fairly recently. So it is kind of a second career. And to be able to take something lemons 2016. In 2016, what to take lemons and turn them into lemonade, to really take something that can be devastating later in your career and then pivot and turning it into something so positive really deserves a a big round of applause. So fantastic. Thank you for that. That is my evaluation. I'll return back to our Toastmaster, David Ash. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. General Elevator. And with that, we are uh, getting close to the top of the hour and it's getting close to time to wrap up. I would like to just ask uh, Renee, uh, if you're still around, do you have any thoughts on this meeting? I know you're the district club growth director, so you might have some thoughts in, in that capacity or any other capacity. I'd like to, I think all of us like to give anyone who comes as a guest a bit of a chance to, to speak. So any, any any closing remarks from you, Renee? Actually, thank you for letting me um, take a couple minutes. One of the things that I wanted to bring up is today is the start of the Smedley Award 
you know, time period where you were to try and add members to your club. And the thing that we're going to do a little bit differently this year is for every member that a club adds, they get their name thrown into a drawing. And at the end of the period, which runs from one August to the end of September, we'll do a drawing in whichever club is drawn, we'll win a hundred dollar Amazon gift card that you guys can use for whatever you want. And the thing that I love about virtual clubs is you guys, it's really your, it's limitless how many people you can reach out to because you guys meet virtually, you can now, you don't have to have people that are physically located here. And David, you're a perfect example of somebody who doesn't live in the state of Ohio. I would highly encourage you. And I know that you have a great coach, you know, working with you all really expand and see if you can get people outside of like maybe just a local area to join the club. And What's great about having them on Thursday nights, at least in my opinion, that tends to be like the least busy night. It seems like all of my meetings are all towards the beginning of the week. And by the Thursday's kind of like that. Okay, you're kind of getting ready for the weekend. I don't have a lot of things going on. I think you guys have an amazing opportunity to attract people who are looking for a place that they could come that's encouraging because you guys are all super encouraging. You're all very active. There wasn't anybody that was called on that didn't want to speak. There was plenty of feedback given on Layla's speech. You guys are a very active and engaging group. And I think you have a lot to offer to people who are really trying to improve not only their speaking skills, but their leadership skills. And, and David, you did a great job of keeping the meeting moving and keeping people on point on what their roles were and so forth. It was a very well run, very organized meeting. And I think you guys have an awesome opportunity to grow this club, if you start thinking, and I know Jeff gave a speech to our club on Tuesday about thinking outside the box, you know, think of maybe places you haven't thought about trying to attract members to come in from. But again, because you guys are virtual, you have an amazing opportunity to reach people that those of us who only have clubs that meet in person, we're kind of landlocked, so to speak, you can really only get so far out before people are not going to drive that far to come to a meeting. So hopefully all that makes sense, but I would highly encourage you get in and get, you know, members, you know, signed up so that you can be entered in that drawing for the Smedley Award. I would love to see, uh, and we're really going to try and promote that and promote the clubs that are actively adding members throughout the period, putting that on social media, getting you guys like kind of free public relation, you know, PR out there. But um, anyway, we're really trying, I have an amazing club group member of that and they're just amazing they have all these awesome ideas so i'm hoping that you guys will take advantage of that but thank you for inviting me i was very honored that you asked i mean i don't you know i don't take this role lightly and so when people ask me to come and speak it's like oh my gosh i can't believe they want me to come and do that so i was very honored that you reached out so thank you i uh, th thank you renee and thank you for those thoughts uh, and yes being in, in california myself it is perhaps an opportunity to invite some folks who are local here. Mm -hmm. I actually have an in-person club that I'm part of, but there may be people oh, nice. who are local to this area who do can't come to anything in person who would love this uh, this club. And it, it does have the advantage of, or at least I find it to be an advantage of being on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. the, the, we have a Saturday meeting, which is uh, it's, it's 10 a.m., which may be nice for some people, it's 7 a.m. on the West Coast, but I like that because it means that I'm not, it doesn't really break up my day. It's a great yeah. way to start the weekend. Yes. But I'm not, I'm not getting into the weekend activity. This is a, it's, it gets me, gets me energized for the weekend, but just head into the weekend activity. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to invite some other folks myself. Great mm -hmm. idea. So with that, I, I, we, we are getting pretty close to the top of the hour. So it's probably is time to begin to wrap things up. Um, uh, so I will turn it back over to our uh, to our club president, uh, Joy, for any any closing remarks and to uh, close out the meeting. Thank you, David. It is time to wrap up. We started on time and we're going to end on time. So I would like to reiterate the things that were said. Renee mentioned that we are virtual. So Renee, you're welcome to come back at any time. And Layla, you may want to join another club and you will know that we are a virtual club if you choose to join another club and we wish you success in your current club. So thank you everyone for attending tonight. 
I really enjoy the participation that we all have. We're a small but mighty club, and this meeting is adjourned for August 1st, 2024, <laughs> and I will see you all on the third Saturday of the month. <laughs>